Welcome to another Opta Planner example. This time we will be looking at tennis club scheduling. Um, and more specifically, we'll be looking at the feature of uh, fairness constraints, where we want to make sure that um, in a certain solution, um, uh, something is fairly distributed amongst um, the persons uh, involved in the solution, right? So um, let's take a look at tennis club, tennis club scheduling uh, problem. Um, in this problem, uh, we have a number of days, a number of, uh, here we have actually 18 days, where the tennis club uh, has uh, two courts available. And uh, they actually play only once a week, so it's it's 18 weeks actually. And um, since they have two courts available, uh, four teams can actually play, right? Um, now the problem is there are actually more teams. There are actually, as you can see over here, seven teams going from Misha up to, to Tobias. Um, so only four of those teams uh, can play on a certain date. So we have to so we have uh, to sign uh, four teams to come play on the date, and then they play a round robin against all the other teams that are available on that date. So they play basically play three uh, matches, something like that, right? Okay. Uh, that in itself would would be pretty easy to schedule, of course, right? So there are a few extra constraints. Um, so, um, one of the constraints is that certain teams cannot make it on certain dates. So, for example, Irene's team cannot play uh, that, that first day, uh, the day zero, and Tobias' team cannot play on, on, on without this day, uh, day one, right? And so forth. And as you can see, we, have, we can have multiple of these unavailability uh, days for certain teams on a certain day. So, let's see what happens when we start planning this, right? So let me just plan it a little bit and I'll stop it for a second now. Uh, so here we have a schedule where all the teams uh, play a number of times. And uh, you can see that on every day we have uh, four teams that play. So for example, on day zero, Misha's, Susie's, Christina's and Tobias' team play. And um, no team that is unavailable plays uh, on any date. So that, that's a good thing, right? Um, and no team plays twice on the same day, uh, so that basically means that none of the hard constraints are broken. So let's take a look at uh, how those uh, constraints are actually implemented, right? So, okay. Um, here we have the first one that uh, only one team plays on a certain date. So what happens is if you have two team assignments, right, uh, of two teams playing on the same day, so if we have a team assignment for a certain team on a certain day, and we have another one on the uh, for the same team for on the same day. Uh, then we have a problem. We're going to add a hard constraint of minus one. Now you can also see we use the ID trick to make sure that um, we're not punishing a team when it's uh, with the combination with itself, and we and we also make sure that we punish every combination only once uh, again using the ID trick basically. Um, okay. So that's, that's this constraint makes sure that no teams play, no two teams play on the same day. Then we have the unavailability uh, constraint. So when there is a certain unavailability for a certain team on a certain day, so for example, if you look back at the solution that was uh, Irene cannot play on day zero. So if you have that case, so an unavailability of Irene for day zero, then if you have an assignment of that team, so Irene's team on day zero, then we're going to again add a hard constraint. And again, we're going to do minus one. Now you can see, if you look at uh, the solution here, that uh, as you can see at the bottom, bottom here too, by the way, that no hard constraints are broken. So this is a feasible solution. Okay, now on top of that, there are two other constraints. Let me start with the first one, which is basically the, the fairness constraint, right? So um, each team plays for a number of days and we've actually calculated, uh, uh, took the total here at the end. So you can see that, for example, Misha's team is in total playing 10 times, right? And as you can see, mo um, and as you can see, we are going to try to uh, balance this out, make this fair. So all teams should play 10 or 11 days. Um, it's obvious, of course, that we cannot play all, let them all play the exact same number of times uh, because of the fact that um, the number of days that are available divided by the number of teams that are playing is not 
in, in, in discrete numbers. So we need to, some teams just play one day, day one time, one day more, right? They're just lucky. And in this case, uh, Susie's and Christina's teams are lucky to get to play an extra day more. Okay, um, so how do we implement this constraint, right? So there are different ways you can do that. Um, one way um, would be to say, okay, I know the number of day, days that we're going to, that are available. So I know the number of uh, teams that will number of teams that will show up. Uh, so I'll just simply um, calculate. Okay, we need an average of about ten days, and I'll try to get everyone to get this, to be as close to that average as possible, right? Um, the problem with this type of implementing it this way is that when more days are added, you need this. You need to do this calculation differently, of course, right? Um, and so uh, it can get can get quite uh, can, it's annoying to have to do that pre-calculation. Um, and more importantly, um, you are have no guarantee that you'll be actually be able to find a feasible solution which does this fairly. Let me just show that uh, or just explain it anyway let's suppose irene team irene's team for currently has one two three four five days that she doesn't want to play so there are still 12 days open where she wants to play so uh, actually 13 days open where she wants to play so we can give her 10 days suppose she was 10 days unavailable in that case there would only be eight days available for her to play so it would be impossible to give her 10 days uh, her team 10 days to play um, because they were, she was only available for eight days. Um, so in that case, um, you would, would always, we never get ten days for for Irene in the feasible solution, right? And and of course, the hard constraint that they, that she is not, that her team is not able to to join, is is more important than than this whole fairness thing, right? But even if this happens, you want things to be fair, uh, but the other teams and related to her team, right? So. Um, the way to do this is basically with the fairness trick, which I'll explain now. Um, how, is, how does the fairness trick work? Okay, so um, it's, it's, it's shown with a different use case, but, but the thing is the same thing. We want to basically, in, in this tennis club example, we want to load balance the number of times a team plays. Um, in this case, we want to load balance, the, this is for employee rostering, we want to load balance the number of shifts that every employee has to work. We want to make sure that uh, that equals out, right? So that, that that they all work about the same number of shifts. Okay, so what you do is um, you basically, so in, in this case, in the first solution over here, we have employee X working five shifts, employee Y four shifts, and employee Z one shift. So you can easily see um, that this is rather unfair. This one has to work five times as much, uh, so the purple one has to work five times as much as the blue one, right? Um, now, uh, now, one interesting thing to note there is that um, even though in this case the thing we're distributing is a bad thing, they don't they don't want more shifts. Um, and in a tennis club example, it is a good thing they want to play more uh, that we're distributing. Um, it's it's the same rule, it's the same trick, and it works. It's exactly exactly the same thing. You just make sure that they get an even portion of the number of things that we are, we're actually dividing, right? So what we do is we just take the we just count the number of shifts for uh, x, and we take the we square that and take the negative of that. So there are five shifts. So the negative of the square of that is minus 25, right? So minus 25 soft uh, that we add. We do the same for uh, employee Y, where we have four, so minus 16, and the same for uh, one, which ends up uh, for uh, the blue one, which ends up as minus one. Now, if you all count those soft scores together, we get a score of minus 42, right? So now uh, let's take a look at when we change something in this. Uh, doesn't really matter what we change. Let's, let's just change the the I one. Uh, so this one will go to the blue one. So the green, uh, so the yellow. Well, one will only have three shifts and the blue will have two shifts and the purple will stay the same. And then if we do the calculation again, we get uh, purple stays the same, minus 25. Here we go from minus, four to, uh, minus 16 to minus 9, so that's a gain of 7 points. But the blue one there will go from minus 1 to minus 4, that's a loss of 3 points. As a result of which we actually increase our score with four points so this is a better solution you can easily see that this is a better solution of course because it's more fair between blue and yellow where here uh, blue uh, 
only had one shift and, and, and yellow four. Now it's almost the same two and three, right? One difference. Um, again, if we do the same thing and we do, uh, we now take one of the purple ones and move them into the yellow ones. And, and then we have four, four, two, we get a score of minus 36. And if we then balance this out a little bit even more, which is actually uh, the, the best way we can do this, do this with 10 shifts, where we have four, three and three, uh, then you actually see that this is the, the, the best score. And you actually see that this uh, every time this improves, every time we do this, every time we balance it even out more and more. Now, the nice thing about this trick is that if the last two solutions were not feasible for whatever reason, so let's, for example, say that uh, shift A, B, C, D, and E can only be done by employee X because only he has the skills for that, right? Um, then both these bottom solutions would not be feasible. Even in that case, it will try to at least make it as fair as possible between Y and Z. It, it will be unfair because for employee X, but yeah, he's the only one who has that skill, so there's no other way to do that. But at least it will uh, make it fair between uh, Y and Z and actually give Z some more work and Y some less work, right? And it will converge on this solution. Okay. So that, that's the fairness trick, and we can basically use this for our um, for making sure that in uh, in tennis club scheduling the number of days are actually the same. So how do we do that? Pretty simple. We have a rule that for each team we're going to basically count the number of times it's playing. So we're just going to count the number of team assignments, as you can see here. We're just going to count the team assignments. And what we're done going to do is we're going to basically, like I said before, uh, and add a negative of the square of that value. So we take the total and we just uh, multiply it by itself, which is the square, of course, and, and we take a negative of, of that. Um, all right, so what you do see as a result of this is that the score of the median, I've actually done this, in this case, I've done use it as the medium score, and I'll explain in a minute why, um, is that the medium score is never zero, and it's impossible to get that score, but it's, uh, it, and this number, which is, uh, it converges at this number, and which is the more fair, fairest way of doing this, right? Okay, now there's one extra constraint on top of this, and which is actually softer than the than the medium constraint than the constraint of being fair. So that's why uh, the medium constraint was made. Um, it was uh, was made. Uh, so that's why the fairness constraint was actually being made in, uh, a medium constraint. We added an, another constraint, which is the soft constraint in this case, which is uh, less important than than the fairness, and that's that. Um, that's about the number of confrontations. So, for example, on day zero, Misha will play against Susie, Irene, uh, sorry, Susie, Christina, and Tobias. We want to make sure that every team plays against every other team an equal amount of times, right? So, let's take a look there at the confrontations. So, um, for example, Misha, of course, she's never playing against herself. She's playing against Angelica four times, against Catherine five times, Susie five, Irene five, and then Christina six times and then two buys five times, right? Now, um, let's take a look there. Uh, so we were basically counting the number of times that uh, a, a certain team plays against another team on the same date, right? So it is playing on the same date as another team, right? So um, interesting here is we have one going up, actually up to seven here. Uh, Susie and Katrina uh, play against each other seven times and the lowest number is four. We would actually like those to be much, much closer to, uh, more closer together, right? So let's see if we give up a little bit more time and see what happens, right? Look, uh, make sure you look at the score here at the bottom. If you give it a little bit more time, <laughs> pretty quickly I actually finds finds a better solution, and this actually uh, um, it converges on this solution. So I'll just stop it, right? So uh, let's take a look at the confrontations again. Uh, there are no sevens anymore. Nobody's playing seven times against another team. Maximum is six now. Uh, there are still uh, teams playing four times against each other. So we have uh, Susie and Irene playing four times against each other. Uh, and that there, so there are only two uh, uh, fours, uh, because these are just, of course, the mirror of that, of course, right? So um, that this is actually um, a better solution than the one we had before, right? Um, would be even nicer if we could actually trade out these, get rid of these two fours, and and, and reduce uh, 
at least two of these sixes to, to five. Um, but due to the other constraints, uh, mainly the, the fairness constraint, but also the unavailability constraints, it's actually not possible. Um, now, how do we implement uh, the confrontations thing? Well, actually, we use the fairness trick again. It's, it's pretty simple again. We basically take any t, any two combination of any two teams, where we have any two teams, and we say when we have a team assigned for the first team and for the second team, right? And they're both on the same day, and again we use uh, on the same day, and again we use the ID trick to make sure that they're different and we don't count, uh, we don't count them too much. Um, then of course we have a problem, right? Uh, and we're ju so we just count the number of times they actually play these two team plays, uh, two, those two team play against each other, and we again take the negative of the square of that number, right? So it's basically the same thing as as fair uh, fairness uh, constraint which we had here. Uh, and again, this results into uh, an, um, quite a, high, a, a nice number there, uh, quite a high number there, but it um, doesn't matter. It actually evens it out, gives us a very fair distribution. Um, right. Now, the interesting to note here is that this is actually a real-world problem. Um, one of my colleagues had this problem, and um, he did this on paper. He solved this on paper uh, for a couple of evenings, he, he told me. And uh, the solution he came up with uh, was actually uh, on this part actually worse than, than the one we just generated. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, the, the, it's pretty nice, of course, right? And by the way, the implementation of this, the original implementation of this took took a little bit over an hour, which includes a, a rudimentary GUI, GUI uh, and a way to read and write from these XML files. Um, but uh, I did incre improve the GUI a little bit more. Thanks for watching this demonstration. If you want to know more about OptoPlanner, just go to the website optoplanner.org. And if you want to try this example yourself, just download the zip, unzip it, and run the examples. Thanks for watching. Bye.